This is one of the most gaslit conditions in medicine, functional neurological disorder. A 28-year-old woman presented with the onset of neurological symptoms about a week after breaking up with her boyfriend. She came in with right-sided weakness, difficulty walking, and intermittent whole body shaking that looked like seizures. She was scared. Her family was scared. Her testing normal. She has something that's actually not uncommon. In fact, up to 10% of emergency neurological presentations and 20 to 30% of patients seen in epilepsy clinics have this condition. And often they've already been told that nothing is wrong, which couldn't be further from the truth because something is actually happening, just not in the way that people expect. Functional neurological disorder is a condition where the brain has difficulty sending and receiving signals, even though the structure of the nervous system is intact. This is not fake. This is not in their head. And this is not the patient doing this on purpose. The brain is actually functioning, just not functioning correctly. Think of it like a software problem, not a hardware problem. FND can look like many other neurological diseases like stroke or TIA, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, or other movement disorders. Even things like ALS, myasthenia gravis, brain tumors, or even spinal cord compression. And these symptoms can be intermittent or persistent and incredibly disabling. And this is where where people get confused. MRIs, CAT scans, EEGs often come back normal. And this doesn't mean that the symptoms aren't real. It means that we're not seeing structural damage to the nervous system. FND is diagnosed based on positive clinical signs and not just by ruling everything else out. Diagnosis relies on a careful neurological evaluation, showing findings that are internally inconsistent or incongruent with known disease patterns. For example, weakness that improves with distraction or movements that change with attention, normal reflexes despite profound symptoms. This is a rule-in diagnosis and not a diagnosis of exclusion. FND is more common than people realize. It's one of the most frequent diagnoses seen in neurology clinics. It affects all ages, children to adults, and is more commonly diagnosed in women, though men are absolutely affected as well. There is no single cause, but common contributors include physical injury or illness, psychological stress or trauma, major life events, previous neurological disease, chronic pain or fatigue disorders, and an important point is that not every patient has psychological trauma and having FND does not mean that a person has a psychiatric illness. Now, here's the good news is that FND is treatable, but the treatment is different from most neurological diseases. Management focuses on education, understanding the diagnosis, physical therapy specialized for FND, occupational therapy, speech therapy when needed, cognitive behavioral therapy for select patients, and the goal is to retrain the brain, restoring normal movement patterns and control. Outcomes are best when the diagnosis is explained clearly, that patients feel believed, the treatment starts early, and that the care is coordinated. Dismissal and delay make the symptoms worse. Functional neurological disorder sits at the intersection of neurology, psychology, and human experience. These patients are not weak, they're not faking, and they deserve thoughtful and compassionate care. So our patient underwent multidisciplinary treatment and is now doing much better. But remember, 30 to 50% of patients who improve will have some recurrence of symptoms at some point. Now, what predicts lower recurrence? Patients tend to do best when the diagnosis is explained clearly and early. The symptoms are named as real and neurological. The patients understand the triggers and the warning signs and that the treatment focuses on retraining the nervous system and not convincing the patient. There is less stigma and less self-blame. The symptoms can come back, especially during times of stress or illness, but most people who improve don't go back to square one. Each recovery builds skill and resilience in the nervous system, and that framing alone reduces fear-driven relapses. If you or someone you love has been told that everything looks normal, but the symptoms are very real, this video is for you. Save this, share this, another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.